Welcome to Flash CS6 Tutorial 16 Random Question Test Part 3 Naturally to follow up to Part 2 which was Tutorial 15 and that's what I have opened on my computer. I have an error you may not. Um, if I look at uh, line 31 and check the action code these each of these buttons should send me to QUBK4 but I noticed that the the uh, last one did not which I think was my triangle so I just gotta change this to a BK4 you probably don't have this error but I do alright let's go back to the timeline select frame number five you look down there you'll see number five insert a blank keyframe open the actions panel and now what we gotta do is create a random number type 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 and I have two forward slashes and I'm just writing in select random number when you have two forward slashes in a line of code the code is not recognized it's just a comment for myself so I'm starting off by making a variable VAR and I'm calling it select RAM capital S E L capital R A M colon number as just capital N U M B E R as you start tightening it out you get a drop menu and you can just press enter when you see the word number it should turn blue equals math period random capital M small r that will turn blue if it's spelt right open close bracket semicolon and we have this called select Q that's a, a variable we're going to make select Q equals math period round capital M cap, small r that will turn blue open bracket select RAM that's that value here asterisk which is the upper case of the number 8 that's the multiplying sign 6 plus 1 close bracket semicolon when you run this math random it generates a number from 0 to 1 so we're going to multiply that by 6 so the highest number here I can get is 6 or 0 and the lowest I can get is a 0 and if I add 1 I can get as high as 7 or as low as 1 the easiest way to look at it is the highest number I get is the sum of these two the lowest I can get is this number since we've uh, asked for something called select Q we have to make a variable for that so let's go back to the timeline select frame one of the actions layer insert a blank keyframe open the actions panel and declare this variable this is actually on frame two of the actions layer VAR space select capital S Q U colon number equals zero semicolon so that's going to declare that var variable for us and here on this frame four that controls this green button open that actions panel up and instead of going to this we want to go to frame 5 now before we test it let's go back to the main timeline let's go on that frame 5 open the actions panel and let's trace that t-r-a-c-e trace open bracket copying this select Q copying it paste it in close bracket semicolon and we should be able to see that number that we have randomly tested no faults and it was a 7 control test movie test 3 so we can get from 1 to 7 because that's the many questions I have I'm on the main timeline. I'm selecting that frame 5 where we just put that random code. And under that code, I put a couple entry, enters and type, type, type. Now it looks like a lot, but it's the same thing over and over. Type, type, type. Looks like a lot of code. We're going to start off with an event listener called stage period add event listener. Small s small a capital E capital L that will turn blue open bracket event capital E V 
B-E-N-T, period. All of this is upper case. Enter underscore frame, comma, that this will turn blue, comma, and I'm calling it ent frame, E-N-T-F-R-A-M-E, capital E, capital F, close bracket semicolon, function, copy ent frame, paste it in, open bracket E, colon, event, capital E, V-E-N-T, that turns blue, close bracket, colon, void, void and function are the same color. There's an open curly bracket and then way down here there's going to be the closed curly bracket for this event listener. So now we're going to, we're going to have this thing called select queue that is going to tell us what question has been selected. So we're going to say if if turns purple open bracket select queue equals equals one close bracket when I have two equal signs, that's comparing them. So if the random number selects one, it'll do this. If it selects two, it'll do something else, and so on. So now, this if, if statement needs its own open curly bracket. There it is. And as you start to type this code in here, the closed curly bracket for this if will probably appear. If not, you'll have to put it in. So open curly bracket, go to and stop small g, small t, capital A, capital S, that turns blue, open bracket, quotation mark, QUBK1, close quotations, close bracket, semicolon, that's the first question. Now I'm not really sure if this is needed here or not, but what I'm doing is actually resetting that random, random question. As you can see, I do it on all of them. Copy this. Paste it, change this 1 to a 2, change this uh, 1 to a 2. Paste it again, paste it again, paste it again, paste it again. Do it seven times so you have all seven, making sure there are two closed curly brackets. So let's test this and see what happens. Hopefully no errors. And when I click it, it's going to give me a trace a, a number, a random number and we should go to that question. The number was 4, it went to question 4. It's 2, it went to question 2. It's 6, back to 6. So we want to go back to the main timeline. Go back to this frame 2. Open the actions panel and we got to declare some more variables. A couple spaces. Paste type, 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 type variable VAR we're calling it select used Q1 capital S capital U capital Q colon number equals zero semicolon copy it and paste it so you have a two a three a four a five a six and a seven one for each question now we're going to use this variable so we don't ask the same question twice so copy this information for question one, copy it, go back to the actions panel and for question bank one, select that action code, select the very top, put a couple enters, arrow up, write if, I, F, open bracket, paste in what you copied, paste, equals, equals, two equal signs because we're comparing something, zero, close bracket, semicolon. So the first time I come through, it's going to be a zero, allowing this to work. The second time it comes through, it won't be zero and it won't work. So now put, I don't think I need a semicolon, excuse me, enter, open curly bracket, and down the bottom, way down the bottom, after this, enter should be a closed curly bracket. To, so you should end this with two closed curly brackets. Copy this. Back to the timeline. Do BK2. Enter, enter. Paste it. Make sure you put a 2 in here. And make sure at the bottom there are two closed curly brackets. Do the rest of them, 
and I'll get back to you. I'm going to do the last one with you. I'm selecting for question seven, opening the actions panel, putting a couple enters here, arrowing up, pasting it, and making sure this is a seven. And down the bottom of the page, make sure I have two closed curly brackets. Let's go back to the main timeline. Select the frame for the BK1, questions one. And here, when we're answering the questions, true or false, uh, we were jumping to next question. Well, what we want to do is go back to that random question frame, which was frame five. So put a five in here and put a five in here. Go to number two, five in here. You got to put it in all the places. Put a five, put a five there. If it turns green, it's not good. Put a five there. Uh, there's a few on this one. And a five here. And a five here. So for each of our answers, whether they're true or false, they need to be going back to that random. So I'll do the remainder and get back to you. I'll do the last one with you. Going back to the main timeline, selecting for question seven, opening the actions panel. This true false, so there's only two of them. Five and five. Okay, maybe this will work, maybe it won't. No errors. I selected a question five is my random number. I went to five. I'll say true. It must have went back and got five again. Yeah, I got two. It jumped to two. I got one. It jumped to one. False. Three. Jumped to three. And six. It jumped to six. But for some reason, I lost my score. So I got to figure out why I'm losing my score. I'm back on the main timeline and if I open the action code for question one, the problem is right here, this cannot be in here anymore. So highlight it, right click, cut it, go down the bottom of the page and just after the second last curly bracket, insert a line and paste it in there. Click here, open up the actions side panel. We're on frame 11, go to 21. Cut this, go down the bottom, get between the two curly brackets, paste it in and do the rest and I'll get back to you. I have them all done. Close this little panel off and let's test it again. This time we should see the score. I'm selecting four, I jumped to four. Lord of the Rings. I selected three, I jumped to three. Let's give a wrong answer. I selected five, jumped five six to six so I think that's working and our score seems to be working. Um, back on the main timeline I'm selecting the question one bank open the actions panel and right here we have to copy this select use Q1 right click copy it click in here paste it and say equals one semicolon and I have to put that in on all my my answers so copy it come here a couple under and enter paste it and because there's two questions or two answers I need to put two there open this side panel again 
we're on frame 11 make sure this is what's dark select 21 go up here click in the middle here of these two paste it in and make sure you make this a 2 I'm going to copy that come down here there's only I think there's four answers here so select here enter paste it come down here enter paste it and come down here enter paste it do all seven questions and I'll get back to you I'm going to do the last one with you which is frame 71 and look I didn't move my points down here on this one missed this so I better straighten that out 71 move my points down there straighten it out and paste it in there straighten it out make this a 7 and make this a oh copy it and paste it in and straighten it out. I'm closing this off and I'm going to give it a quick test because I think there's one at least one more thing we got to do. I'm going to go there. I got two the same. Once I hit two the same, notice I can't go any further. We'll take a quick look at the action script and we'll see why that is. When we are directed to one of these um, question sections, it's asking if the uh, select used was is a zero and when we went through it the first time we made it a one the second time it gets here it's not a zero but it has doesn't know what to do so it's just sitting there so we have to make something called a else statement and we'll add else statements to these so when it's been used it can jump somewhere else I think that's enough for this video it's getting really long there will be one more part, one more part only, be part four. It will be Flash CS Tutorial 17 Random Question Test Part 4. Save your FLA. Hope you learned something from this tutorial and I hope you use what you learned.